Oh, hello there. Come and join me. My name's Nicole and I have a story I want to share with you. It's called Winnie's Perfect Pet and it's by Laura Owen and illustrated by Corky Paul. Do you have any pets? Winnie has a black cat called Wilbur. But Wilbur can be clumsy and Winnie doesn't think he's much fun. In this story, Winnie tries to create the perfect pet but soon learns that you should be careful what you wish for. Wilbur was asleep on the front doorstep when Winnie rushed up. Oh, Wilbur, she said, I've had a terrible morning. Mrs Palmer asked me to help the children learn their spellings, but I thought she said spells. I showed them how to magic up a dragon. It was only a little one, but now Mrs P is cross with me. The dragon set off all the fire alarms. Wilbur opened one eye. He looked at Winnie. Then he closed the eye again. Let's play a game, Wilbur, said Winnie. Take my mind off things. That's what a good pet would do. Wilbur arched his back and yawned. <sighs> You're as lazy as a lizard, said Winnie. Come on, let's play tennis, Wilbur. Winnie rushed indoors. She opened the cupboard under the stairs and out fell everything. First Winnie tugged at something grey and tatty. Then she pulled out something that looked like a spoon tied up with string and something else that looked like a mouldy old apple. She popped off to change and then skipped back outside. What do you think of my outfit, Wilbur? she asked. Wilbur just put his paws over his face. Winnie bounced the ball all around Wilbur. Bounce, bounce. Come on, she said. You're no fun, Wilbur. I'll have to use magic if you won't play. Winnie pointed her wand at the racket and ball. Abracadabra, 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 she shouted. In an instant, there were three tennis rackets. The rackets were hitting balls at Winnie. Winnie waved her own racket all over the place, but she missed every ball. Ow! Get off! Stop! she shouted. Mute's kneecaps! Nobody's nice to me today, not even my wand. Winnie threw her wand as far as she could. A moment later, the wand was back in the mouth of a dog. The dog came bounding up to Winnie. It was Scruff, who belonged to Jerry the Giant, who lived next door to Winnie. Scruff dropped the wand at Winnie's feet. Then he grinned up at her and wagged his tail. Good boy, Scruff, said Winnie. Do you want me to throw it again? Winnie threw the wand again, and again, and again, and each time Scruff dashed back with it. Winnie threw the ball too. Fetch, Scruff, she said. Clever boy. Did you see that, Wilbur? Isn't he a clever dog? Meow, said Wilbur. He didn't sound very impressed. Soon it was lunchtime and they all went into the kitchen. Wilbur winked at Scruff and pointed at a packet of kipper biscuits. He nodded towards Winnie. Scruff grinned and nodded his head and wagged his tail. He took the biscuit box in his mouth and gave it to Winnie. For me, said Winnie, not really looking. Thank you, Scruff. Winnie took a biscuit from the box and popped it into her mouth. 
Ew! Pfft! Winnie spat the biscuit out. Yuck! I hate kipper biscuits! Scruff hid under the table. Wilbur grinned. Then he put all Winnie's favourite lunch snacks on a tray. Crispy worms, a nettle sandwich, a cup of slug smoothie. Yummy, said Winnie. You're cleverer than Scruff, Wilbur. You know just what I like. But Scruff stuck out a leg and trip went Wilbur. Crash went the tray, splat went the smoothie and crispy worms fell all over Winnie. Oh, Wilbur, you're as clumsy as a centipede on skates, shouted Winnie. Wilbur and Scruff stuck their tongues out at each other. Suddenly, Winnie had a brilliant idea. Of course, said Winnie. Cats are clever and dogs are obedient. I want a pet that's both of those things. So what I need is a cog. Yow, went Scruff. Meow, went Wilbur. They both raced for the door. They both wanted to be the first one to escape outside. But before they got there, Winnie said, Abracadabra! Magic whirled and swirled and suddenly there was a cog. Perfect, said Winnie. But the cog was not perfect. It ran up the curtains and chewed them to bits. Meow! Woof. Chew, chew, munch, chew, munch. The cog jumped down and stood at Winnie's feet. Be a good cog, said Winnie. But the cog hissed at her. Then it did a wee on her foot. Yuck! Bad cog, said Winnie. The cog jumped out of the window into the garden. It began to dig. Stop, shouted Winnie. The cog took no notice. It rolled in the mud. Then it sat and licked the mud off its legs. It jumped up at Winnie with muddy paws and scratchy claws. Get down, said Winnie. Naughty boy, Wilbur, save me. But of course, Wilbur wasn't there. Oh dear, said Winnie. I wanted to mix the best bits of a cat with the best bits of a dog. This cog is the worst bits of both. Where's my wand? I want my Wilbur back. Winnie saw her wand on the ground. The cog saw it too, and it began to run towards it, teeth snip-snapping. It's my wand, shouted Winnie, and she leaped to grab it. Abracadabra! She waved the wand just as the cog's teeth were about to snap it in two. Suddenly, Wilbur was back, looking shocked but pleased. And Scruff was back too. He ran away down the drive. Scruff! boomed a big voice. It was Jerry the giant. Scruff jumped around his owner, wagging his tail and woofing. My dear old Scruff, laughed Jerry. <laughs> I wondered where you'd got to. You're the best dog in the world. Winnie smiled and picked Wilbur up. Well, if Scruff's the best dog, you're definitely the best cat. Better than that cog any day. Give us a kiss, Wilbur. That's all for now. I hope you'll join me for another story soon.